in uh, infectious diseases, these infections that are very resistant to antibiotics are referred to as superbugs. And I think that's where the gonorrhea got that term, super gonorrhea. My name is Dr. Phoebe Juma. I work in the Infectious Diseases Unit of Kenyatta National Hospital. STIs have been with us and it's a big problem, especially during the time of COVID. There may have been a, an increase in the, in the numbers. There are infections which are spread by, by sexual contact or you could say sexually transmitted diseases. For STIs in the past, you're able to give a patient a single injection or a single tablet and the infection clears. But now when you develop resistance, those drugs don't work and you're forced to use uh, more, what do you call it, powerful antibiotics, yeah. So that's what super gonorrhea is, uh, gonorrhea that is resistant to the uh, medicines that are um, widely available. So the symptoms you have are like pain when passing urine, uh, yellowish discharge from the urinary tract, that's in men. In women, there are other symptoms they could have, apart from the discharge, they could have just pelvic pain, the abnormal uh, bleeding, pain when having sex. So women present a little differently from men. Men are more likely to show symptoms. So for women, a large number, actually like 70% are asymptomatic. So the incubation period, a few days. So anywhere from about two days to 10, about 10 days. Yeah, but within a short period, a few weeks, will have symptoms. Supergonorrhea is treatable, but it will be more difficult because it will be a process that involves more tests, lab tests. So for example, for bacteria that are resistant, we usually have to do cultures in the lab so that it can tell us which antibiotics to use for that patient. And then you see previously we were using start doses, single doses of oral antibiotics. So when we can't use those, we are forced to go to other classes of antibiotics, so it might mean a longer duration of treatment, maybe something which is administered uh, IV, so meaning you might need to be hospitalized, yeah. So in women, you could get infertility, there are things they say, uh, chronic pelvic pain. Uh, on the male side, the, there's inflammation of the urethra, which also passes urine, so you could get problems like urethral strictures. Sometimes gonorrhea is not just limited to the reproductive tract, it can spread to other areas. People get like a, um, arthritis, um, symptoms in other parts of the body. So if um, for women, because from the reproductive tract it goes up through the pelvis, you know, the abdominal organs, you can get inflammation even around like the liver. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you pass the infection to your child, when they're at birth, they get, um, a disease called uh, ophthalmia neonatorium. So basically inflammation of the, the eyes and discharge. And if that is not treated, they can become blind. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a, a disease which is spread by contact. And you know, it's sexual contact that is the, the greatest risk. So by limiting your sexual activities to partners who maybe are, are tested, maybe not, uh, uh, being promiscuous, let me say. But uh, there's also the other things like using barriers, uh, like condoms, when you're having sex, yeah, those can help. The other ways by which it can be spread. So people who have, for example, uh, oral sex, you can get a pharyngitis. It can be spread from a mother to her child during delivery, yeah. So I think, yes, we'll use condoms, but also make, make sure your partner, like, before you've been tested, they don't have symptoms, yeah, you don't have many partners. Yeah, that will also help to reduce your risk. So knowing that women are not likely to show symptoms, a lot of them will not show symptoms, or the classical symptoms, uh, yeah, the partners have to ensure that they go with their, with their female partner for treatment as well. So that may help us to detect even the women who are asymptomatic. No, it does, and that's the problem. It, they may not show the outward symptoms, but there's inflammation of the reproductive organs and actually it can lead to infertility.